Welcome to Electron Online and here is a different kind of example of how to deal with simple harmonic motion. In previous examples we, turned, we looked at it in terms of energy and we looked at it in terms of velocity as a function of position and acceleration as a function of position. Here we're going to look at it in terms of uh, time and velocity and maybe I want to change that into acceleration. Uh, so we're going to find the velocity and acceleration as a function of time and we're also going to figure out how long it takes for an, an object in oscillatory motion to reach a certain position in its motion. Alright, so we're going to start off uh, by explaining this a little bit first. Uh, let's say this is a machine part that goes up and down at a frequency of 20 Hertz and let's say that its maximum displacement from equilibrium is 5 centimeters. So the first question is what is the time that it takes to go from its initial position to position x equals minus 5 centimeters. Of course, minus 5 centimeters is when the part will reach this position right here. And assuming that it starts here at t equals 0, then it would probably first move up and then move back down. So you can see that that is about 3 quarters through its initial cycle. So we need to figure out what the period is first. So we can say that if the frequency is 20 Hertz, then the period is equal to 1 over the frequency, and so that's 1 over uh, 20 per second, which is equal to 0 0.05 seconds. So that tells us that the entire oscillatory motion, one complete cycle of its motion, takes 0 0.05 seconds if the frequency is 20 Hertz, and since um, we don't reach this position here until we've gone through three quarters of its cycle, which is three quarters of a period, then we can say that for part A that the time when um, x is equal to minus five centimeters is equal to three quarters of the period, and that's of course again assuming that we start at the equilibrium point, we first move up, we come down, we then come down here, that's three quarters of a cycle, three quarters of a period, which is equal to three quarters times 0 0.05 seconds and of course that's uh, what's three quarters of that hmm what's three quarters of so 0.75 times 5 equals the time when x equals minus 5 centimeters would be equal to um, 3.75 hmm let me 0 0.0375 seconds all right, that's how long it would take to go through three quarters of its initial cycle. Okay, the next part of the problem, we're supposed to find the time when x is equal to two centimeters. So we want to find how long it takes for the object to, to go from the equilibrium point to a position two centimeters above the equilibrium point. How long does that take? For that, we need the equation describing the motion. And so we were looking for this equation where x as a function of time is equal to a times the cosine of omega t. However, look at this, the cosine of 0 is 1, so if time is equal to 0, that would place x equal to the maximum displacement, so that would put the object over here, and I want an equation that describes the motion that places the object over here when time is equal to 0, which means we need the sine function in this case, so x as a function of time is equal to the amplitude times the sine of omega t. Using this equation instead of that equation, puts the object at the equilibrium point when time is equal to zero because the sine of zero is zero. And so we're going to use this equation instead of that equation. Now, again, we're looking for time when x equals two centimeters, so we have to solve this equation for time. So first of all, we're going to divide both sides by a, so x over a is equal to the sine of omega t, which means that um, omega t is equal to the arc sine, the inverse sine of x over a, and so we're looking for t, so t is equal to 1 over omega times the arc sine of x over a, and I forgot my bracket there, my parentheses. Okay, now we can plug in what that is equal to, and remember that omega is equal to 2 pi f, right? So we know that the time is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the frequency, which is 20 hertz, times the arc sine of x over a, x is 2 centimeters, a is 5 centimeters, so that would be 2 over 5. All right, now, make sure your calculator is in radian mode, because everything here has to be in radians, so 2 divided by 5 radians, and 
take the arc sine of that, inverse sine, and then we divide that by 2 pi and divide by 20. And the time is equal to 0 0.00. .00 three two seven seconds and that's how you find the time anywhere along its its path its motion and um, again make sure you start off with the right function here that describes the initial condition of your particular problem all right next now they're asking for the velocity when time equals one second all right so do we need the same equation? Well, at least we'll start with this equation, but this shows us the position as a function of time. We need an equation that shows us the velocity as a function of time. So let's take the derivative of that, that equation. So for part c, we're going to take this equation and find the derivative velocity is equal to the dx dt, which is equal to the derivative of a sine omega t. So the derivative of sine is the cosine, so that gives me a times the cosine of omega t times the derivative of the angle, which is omega, so we can say that velocity as a function of time is equal to a omega times the cosine of omega t. Since we're trying to find the velocity when t is equal to one second, we can then say that the velocity when t is equal to one second is equal to, now I'm just plugging in the numbers there, a is five centimeters, omega is hmm, two pi f, so we have five centimeters. Now, of course, if we put this in terms of centimeters, the velocity will be in centimeters per second, which is acceptable. So five centimeters times two pi times the frequency of 20 hertz times the cosine of omega, which is two pi times 20 hertz times one second. Okay, and hertz is, of course, one over a second, so the seconds disappear. So let's take the cosine of that. So that would be uh, 2 times pi times 20 times 1, and take the cosine of that, and we should get 1. That makes sense, because 20 hertz is the oscillatory frequency, and if we let one second go by, that means that the object oscillated back and forth 20 times. And so after exactly one second, it should be exactly back in its original position, which is at the equilibrium point. And at that point, it should have its maximum value for the velocity. That makes sense. So therefore, the cosine of this should be 1. That makes sense. And so this is equal to 5 centimeters times 2 pi times 20 hertz times 1. And let's see what we get from that. So 5 times 2 times pi times 20. And so that would be 628 centimeters per second, which of course is 6.28 meters per second. So that would be the velocity when t is equal to 1 second. There. Now finally, we're going to find the acceleration when time is equal to 0.15 seconds. So that's a little bit different here. Now we're going to put in a value here that may place the object not exactly at the uh, equilibrium point. Um, let's find out. Hmm, 0.15 seconds. Maybe it will. Well, we'll find out. Anyway, we need an equation for the acceleration, and we had an equation here for the velocity, which means we have to take the derivative again. So for part d, acceleration is equal to the derivative of the velocity which is equal to the derivative of this equation. And of course, the derivative of the cosine is negative sine, and the derivative of the angle is omega. So what we'll get here is equal to minus a omega squared times the sine of omega t. So now we have an equation for the acceleration as a function of time. So a, when time is equal to 0 0.15 seconds, is equal to a, which is 5 centimeters, omega squared, which is 2 pi squared, times 20 hertz squared, because remember, omega is 2 pi f, so 2 pi times the frequency, times the sine of omega, which is 2 pi, times 20 hertz, times 0 0.15 seconds. Hmm, I wonder. So let's find 
the sine of that angle. And again, that's in radians. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode, 0.15 times 2 times pi times 20, and take the sine of that. And it's zero. Mm, so I picked my numbers kind of in an odd place. So what does that mean? Well, after 0.15 seconds, which is three cycles, the object will be back exactly where it started in the equilibrium point, so it will be right there. And of course, at that point, the acceleration will be zero because the sine of this is zero. And therefore, we can say that the acceleration, when time is equal to 0 0.15 seconds, is equal to zero meters per second. Because at that point, the object is right back at the equilibrium point. And that's how you do a problem like that.